Good morning, everyone. We'd like to thank Davidson College for joining us today. We have Meredith and uh, other Davidson students. Without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to them so they can tell us a little bit more about Davidson. All right. Hey, good morning. Um, so my name is Meredith High. I am one of the senior assistant deans at Davidson College. Um, and I manage Durham County as part of my territory. So I'm um, the admission counselor for any students who are interested in Davidson who go to school in Durham or Wake counties. Um, so really glad to get a chance to connect with Emily Kay this morning. Um, I am joined by three current Davidson students. And so um, I'm just gonna fully own, like they are definitely the most interesting people for you to talk to. And so as we, chat this morning, um, I'm going to kind of provide a little bit of information and then really let them fill in some good details about their experiences. So um, with that, if um, Cynthia and Alex and Lewis, if you will introduce yourselves, that would be awesome. Good morning, everyone. I'm Cynthia Rodriguez. I'm a senior here at Davidson. I'm from Chicago. My major is anthropology and educational studies. And um, I found out about Davidson through my high school college counselor. So she was like, check out Davidson. And I'm here now, so. Good morning, everyone. My name is Alex. I'm a Hispanic studies major and religious studies minor with the intention to pursue law upon graduation. I'm currently a junior at Davidson and I found out, so I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York, but I moved to the South at a younger age. So I live in like an area of South Carolina that's super close to Charlotte. And I actually found out about Davidson through a friend and then I visited and met people on campus and now I'm here. Hello everyone, I'm Lewis. I'm originally from um, Miami, Florida, um, and I my story with Davidson is a little bit interesting because I, like my family, my aunt and my uncle have lived in the area for 12 years now, uh, so I got to like know Davidson that way and actually um, came to visit like every summer, but at the beginning I was worried about like um, the price tag and what that would mean, but uh, after that, thanks to the Davidson Trust, we, we'll talk a little bit um, during the session, I was able to come to Davidson. Awesome. Um, so you've got these three great students here um, with us this morning and, and they'll be able to provide some really good perspective. Um, as we kind of give an overview um, of Davidson, we wanted to start off talking about academics, right? Because you know, you think about college, you know, one of the first things you think about is like, what are the classes going to be like? And what are the professors going to be like? And, um, you know, Davidson is a small liberal arts college, right? So what does that mean? It means we're 2,000 students. It means the only students at Davidson are your age, right? Also pursuing bachelor's degrees, their undergraduate degrees. And that means that your professors are 100% focused on you. So you have small classes. Um, the average class size at Davidson is 15 and they are capped at about 35 or 40. So you are never going to be in a large lecture hall. So it's a place where, you know, you come and you have these discussion-based classes. Um, our professors do a lot of creative work with like using technology to flip the classroom or they do a lot of problem-based learning, especially in lab sciences, right? So you get a lot of chance to actually get your hands dirty and do science rather than sitting in a lecture hall. Um, it's a place where you don't have to know exactly what you want to do after college right now. I'm seeing Cynthia nod and I love that. She's like, yes. <laughs> um, and you, know, you actually have until the end of your sophomore year, so two full years to decide what your major is going to be. And that's a really good thing because there's a lot of fields out there that in high school, you just don't even get the chance to explore. It's just a matter of time. And so, you know, maybe you come to Davidson and you want to explore, you know, what anthropology really means and looks like, or maybe you want to explore computer science, or maybe you want to explore, um, you know, public health, health and human values is what we call that at Davidson, or gender and sexuality studies, right? Like a lot of these fields that just aren't at your fingertips before college. And so, um, Alex, I'm going to let you speak a little bit about kind of choosing your major, um, your, your experience in the classroom, and kind of what liberal arts means. So I think my biggest 
fear and the biggest fear of my mother when I chose my major was like, oh my gosh, Alex, are you going to make money when you graduate out of college? She was like, that's the whole point of you going to college is that you have, you know, a future and you have success in your future. And at first I was so worried because I was like, oh my gosh, do I have to be an econ major in order to like be successful in terms of uh, money after college? But the one thing that I think Davidson helped me to see is that major doesn't determine what my future looks like but it's that stepping stone in order to help me think about my future and so what i've noticed about majors at davidson the liberal arts education is that it provides you with the tool set necessary to think analytically and think critically about things from a variety of different angles which is applicable to any job that you have and i have a lot of friends who were religious studies majors and also did pre-med or friends who like for instance myself i'm a hispanic studies major i've never taken um, a math or science course at davidson but yet i also did a tuck business bridge program at the which is out on dartmouth's campus and so it's interesting how these opportunities can come to students who aren't from those backgrounds so there's a lot of access and opportunities to things that are outside of your intended major or your career field um, which is a really neat experience to have so i actually got to interview for like consulting firms even though that wasn't in um i i never had experience with that but thanks to money that i had gotten from davidson i was able to attend the tech business bridge program and then go through interviews um as a result of that program so that just goes to show you that you're not put into a box just because you're a specific major doesn't necessarily mean that you're a specific this that or the other it doesn't determine your career you're free to explore that and that's really what the liberal arts education is about it's about you exploring things that are outside of your comfort zone things that you're genuinely interested in and passionate in because that's what's going to lead to success in the future when you're passionate about something, you're more likely to do it well. And that's what I found here at Davidson is what I'm passionate about and what I feel my future would be best put toward. So that's just a little insight into like easing worries about what does your major look like? Because as you know, um, by looking at Davidson's page, we don't have as many majors as maybe other schools. And you might be scared if you're interested in business or um, because we don't have a business major, marketing, et cetera. We don't have those majors here, but it doesn't mean that you can't find outlets to those interests. Um, so that's just my insight on choosing your major. And again, the liberal arts education is really about asking these questions and thinking analytically and critically, which is useful and applicable over a variety of different career fields. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. And I think, you know, one thing a lot of our students talk about is how integral their professors are in helping them figure out, you know, what they want their major to be um, and just how to advise them. So, Lewis, will you kind of speak to faculty relationships a little bit? Um, originally, when I thank you for that, and originally when I graduated high school, uh, I realized that I had gotten that far thanks to the kindness of others. Um, it was important for me to be in an environment that kind of offered me like the same opportunities. Um, it was really good to actually um, be in a place where people felt and care about my ideas as, as much as I did. Um, and I think what's really important about like having close relationships with students, um, for example, like the largest class I've been a part of here at Davidson uh, was actually 32 student, two students. Actually, the smallest class that I've been here at Davidson was eight students. So even though like there's a range, the class are like technically when compared to other institutions, uh, the classes are still pretty small. Um, and for me, what's, what was really important and how that played a role in my life is that having those close relationships, having those like conversations before and after class, I kind of what allow professors to see me abilities that I, I didn't even see in myself. Um, so particularly in, in my journey, um, you might find that like maybe like at other institutions or maybe even here at Davidson, you might have to um, fight a little bit for like research opportunities, for example, um, get yourself out there a little bit more, which still happens. But at the same time, I think here at Davidson, uh, that relationship you have with your professors that um, environment in which like you want to work together um, happens 
um, much more organically. Yeah, and Lewis alluded, alluded to research, right? And um, that's something we really, um, we really support here at Davidson. There's a lot of student research happening. And um, one of the questions that, you know, your leaders sent us ahead of time was talking about maybe some of the less common majors and um, like unusual programs. And one thing that happens at Davidson is interdisciplinary studies. So sometimes that's professors from two different departments coming together and creating a course that is interdisciplinary in nature. And so you're necessarily looking at like an issue or a phenomenon or some concept from the angle of multiple disciplines, right? Um, or you're developing your own major. So Cynthia's actually done this, um, and so I'm going to ask her to talk about the Center for Interdisciplinary Studies and the major that she created um, and the research that she got to do as, as part of that. Um, so I'm majoring in anthropology and educational studies. It sounds like two, but it's really just one. Um, and that's through our Center for Interdisciplinary Studies, which I kind of like to refer to as kind of a make your own major program. So when I got to Davidson, I'm not so sure about you guys, but I really had no clue what I wanted to do. Like I could tell you what I was passionate about, but I didn't really see a major that was like, yes, like that's the one. Um, and in my first semester here, I did end up taking an anthropology course and I was like, and I was introduced to anthropology, I had never heard of it before. And I really liked the professor and working with the professor, I was like, okay, like maybe I can major in anthropology. Um, but I've always been passionate about educational studies. So supporting students kind of at, the, like, at any really point in their journey and understanding kind of like, what does that journey mean for many different families and students and kind of looking at it, you know, in terms of policy, in terms of like kind of a larger system. And so my spring semester, I took some educational studies courses and it was with that professor that he was like, you know, we have this program where you can combine the two, right? Like we do have an anthropology major, but we don't necessarily have an educational, like an official educational studies major combine them and I was like, you can do that. And so um, I ended up combining them and I had the same process as everyone else. Like I still had until my sophomore spring to decide, which was plenty enough time to kind of figure out like, is this really the track I want to take? And um, it was just, it's been an incredible journey. And so a part of, uh, we call it CIS for short, but a part of what the CIS programming is, is that you work, you know, you choose your advisor. So two, you know, two professors, maybe three that you're like, I, you know, they, they see my vision and I, I think you can really support me and what I'm trying to do here. They have the connections and the expertise I'm looking for to support the research that I want to do, the, the questions I want to ask. And so a part of it is a research component. And so at the end of, I call it kind of like your senior year project, right? Like the end of your studies, you have to kind of come up with a one of three things. You can either take an exam, you know, just a standard exam, you choose a set of literature or whatnot, or you do a written, traditional written thesis. So like kind of your you write this long research paper essentially, uh, or you can kind of do more of a creative capstone project. Um, I've chosen to do a thesis and it's on gentrification in my neighborhood in Chicago and kind of looking at what are the cultural, the cultural, cultural social dynamics of gentrification because I felt that a lot of the research was focusing on the economics of gentrification. And I was like, why is no one talking about like, what happens to people, right? What happens to family and communities? So um, that's been my experience with CIS. And, you know, I was able to get a grant actually called the Abernathy Grant through Davidson. There is a lot of access to grants and advisors. Oh, I see a little clap, thank you. <laughs> um, there is a, um, a lot of opportunities that, like connections that you have you through your professors and through other um, kind of centers and academic programs at Davidson that can help you get the funding and the connections that you need. So like, let's say had I not been going to Chicago to do research at home, like if I was gonna go somewhere else, I would have been able to apply for a grant to help me pay for housing in that area to help me get a living stipend while I'm also managing the research day to day. So. Thank you, Cynthia. I love hearing you talk about your work. It's amazing. Um, and you know, one of the things that I really appreciate most about Davidson is that it's a place that is in the habit of saying yes to its students, right? Like it is a place that kind of believes, look, our students have the best ideas out there, right? And it is not our business to tell them how to study the things that they are passionate about. You know, Alex talked about finding her passion, Cynthia, I mean, you can see how excited she is talking about her work. Um, and Davidson kind of thinks its job is to like get out of your way, right? And let you do um, the best work that you can do. So these grant opportunities are really abundant. Um, I wanna switch gears just a little bit and talk about um, the honor code on campus. So you may or may not, um, the students who are here with us today be familiar with Davidson's honor code, but it is 
really integral to the Davidson experience. Um, and it allows us to operate as a community where the assumption is trust, right? The assumption is that everyone around you is doing their work honestly, um, and that everyone kind of respects each other in the community. And so Cynthia, I'm gonna throw it back to you because um, you've been on the Honor Council. So I'm gonna let you talk about the Honor Code and how that actually plays out and looks on campus. Yeah, so um, the Honor Code is this kind of, it's this community contract that you sign. So as a first year, you come in and um, it's a, there's a whole signing ceremony. So we, we really make it official and kind of hold up that culture around the Honor Code. And it's essentially, you're signing off on saying, I will not lie, cheat, or steal during my time at Davidson, and I will not support others that do. And so I know a lot of students get really nervous, like, and I get a lot of questions, like, is it, like, is it real? <laughs> like, how serious is this culture? And so I think as a community, it's really about maintaining trust to say, I can leave my things here and I can comfortably do, like, whatever it is that I need to go do really quick and come back and trust that it's going to be there right where I left it, like, my computer, my wallet, like, anything that I choose to leave behind. And some of you might not feel comfortable with this. It's definitely an adjustment. I was definitely like, I was that person in high school. I was like, hey, can you watch my stuff? I'll be right back, you know? But I find my, I like, kind of let go of that habit um, while being on campus. And it also gives trust with, you know, between you and your professors to say, hey, I'm gonna, you know, your professors are gonna tell you, you're gonna have a take home exam. So I'm gonna open up the exam online from this time to this time like over the weekend, for example, you have the entire weekend to take the exam, no problem, just so long as um, you take it within the time limit that I've given you. And I, I'm asking you not to look at, you know, other, not to reference your textbook or your notes. And so it's just that really relationship of trust where it gives us really a lot of agency to be like, okay, well, you know, maybe I had a rough morning and my morning's really busy, but I want to get my test done today. And if it's 9 p.m. at night and I'm ready to go, I can take it right at that moment, right? I don't have to you know, maybe sometimes taking a test in a classroom isn't the most productive for you. You feel stressed out. You're worried about what other students and like what their pace is. And so um, I served as the defense advisor for the Honor Council. And so we basically, if someone, if you're in a situation where you're being investigated or um, you, people have questions around like, you know, if you, we think you broke the Honor Code, um, I work with you to make sure that you know, you feel like you're being fully represented and you're like, hey, this is actually what happens. Like, here's my case, you know? And so we do have, um, through the Honor Council, we do have um, kind of a process of what happens when someone does break the Honor Code. And so it's, it's a council of all students, it's student run. Like we're really the ones in charge to, to hear you out. And you know, I think it's a really special moment to, to sit with your peer during a difficult time and being like, okay, well, you know, you've, you've done this and it's not, you know, it goes against the code, but we see that you're also in a difficult time, right? Maybe you were really, you were just really stressed and like you just, I don't know, you just, you cheated on a test because you were stressed about your grade because you really needed this, to pass this class or something. But we see that, right? We see the entire context. It's not like, oh, bye, okay, see you later. You messed up. It's very like, okay, like we try to invite you back into the community and say, you messed up, but we can grow from this and let, let us help you grow from that. Um, so yeah. Yeah, the honor code, it's just, it's really cool how it makes campus a place that is like collaborative and people are interested in like supporting and being respectful of one another. And I just, I really love that about how it changes campus. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about what happens outside of the classroom and like, you know, in the summers, especially. Um, so we mentioned earlier, there's a ton of grant opportunities available. Um, Lewis, I know that you recently had one um, just this past spring break, if you want to talk about that. And then I'd love for each of you to talk about like some internship experiences, what you've done in the summers, whether that's like pre-professional, whether it's focused on service, um, but just talking a little bit more about like what opportunities there are, there are for you outside of the classroom. Um, yeah, so something I really appreciate about Davidson is that it gives you the opportunity um, to actually kind of like own your journey. Um, particularly uh, this past uh, spring break, I asked like the grant, I asked a grant uh, from the chaplain's office. Um, I kind of like wanted to, like after being apart from um, my family for four years and getting like to be on my own, I, I really wanted to um, kind of figure out what my religious journey looked like uh, while I was on my own. Um, so I was able to ask for um, a grant uh, from the chaplain's office and that kind of gave me the opportunity um, to really explore, like explore what that looked like. And something that I really appreciate is that Davidson kind of like gave me that power um, 
instead of determining what my journey or how I should explore it, they kind of like uh, with that grant, like they gave, they, gave me, they gave me the money and they gave me the freedom to do that. So I was able to uh, go to Madrid and Paris this past uh, spring break after um, filling out like the proposal. And I, and I really, really, that's something that I think this was a good time to do because before I go, like I'm, I'm a senior and I, before I like I step into um, like the professional world, having that opportunity to actually take a week um, to focus on nothing but my journey is something that I think you can only do while, uh, while you're in college. So I really appreciate that Davidson does not only understand um, that you're like your student, you're smart, and you, there are so many things you want to accomplish. It doesn't like Davidson doesn't only look at the future, but looks at how important the present is. And I think that's like the emphasis on like wanting to have all the, these opportunities and these grants. Awesome. Alex, do you want to speak about like maybe what you've done in some of your summers? Sure. So um, I actually also used a chaplain's grant to work with the local children's home in my area in Lancaster, South Carolina. And what we did was it was a, it was a project that gave the, the children of the home the agency to choose what they wanted the grant to look like. So I was just like the person who could apply for it at Davidson, but I really wanted it to be a project that came from the children versus something that came from me because they know what they want to do and what they need better than I do. And so I had worked with them the summer previously as their activities director and there weren't a lot of funds to go do things that I would have wanted to do with them. And like, we did some fun activities, like we went roller skating and I had gotten this like big water slide so that they could play outside and have a field day. But I really wanted to do something that they wanted to do and they're so bored in the house during the summer. So what we did was I got a grant from the chaplain's office to do projects with both the girls and the boys of the home. And they chose, the girls chose to do like a rap battle, like wild and out. So we got t-shirts and they decorated signs and they did like, you know, the rounds with wild and out. And then um, the boys wanted a basketball tournament. And I was actually able to contact Davidson and Davidson allowed me to like do a tour of the stadium. And for a lot of the boys that were, that was their first time on a college campus. Um, and it really meant a lot that we were able to share that moment together because um, I remember one of the, the coordinators of the, the home like emailed me and she said thank you so much because the boys were talking about how like excited they were about what college is because they didn't know what that looked like or that that was an opportunity out there for them like they couldn't see themselves in that space and being able to have their basketball tournament on campus and I got some football players from Davidson who were doing their summer workouts to come speak with them it was a really nice experience for them to see what what college looks like and not in a non-traditional way um, and so that's something that I've done during the summers. This summer, I'm doing the Davidson in Washington program, which looks a little bit different than it normally would have, but it pairs a, semin a seminar with an internship. It's supposed to be in Washington, D.C., but now it will be remote. But that's another example. And again, just echoing what Lewis said about Davidson, like giving or having a variety of opportunities out there for students, but it also a variety of different ways to fund those opportunities. There are a bunch of grants that students can apply for. A lot of the times, um, like you will, it, it's just a great way to fund what you want to do in the summer so that students don't feel like finances are an obstacle to do what they would like to do and create the summer how they want. Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and Alex, I love that you touched on getting the football players to help you on campus. And I think that really speaks to something that is really core about Davidson, right? So we are a division one school, um, which I think a lot of people don't expect when they hear about a small liberal arts college of 2000 students, but we're division one. And one thing that is a little bit different is that the division one athletes at Davidson are just like normal members of the student body, right? So like they're really good at their sport and they are on ESPN sometimes and they are, you know, conference champions, but they also are in these small classes of 15 students and they're a really like ingrained part of this 
you know, collaborative community where people trust one another and are supportive of each other. And so they are eager to like jump in and help with projects like, Al like Alex's, just like any other student. Um, and so I think Davidson has done um, a really, really cool job of kind of like striking this cool balance that works really well for our community, right? Um, so I, I kind of love highlighting that. Um, I also, I wanna talk about um, international opportunities because there's a lot of that. So Cynthia, I'm gonna throw this to you because <laughs> Cynthia, miss, I've studied abroad four times, <laughs> um, is like the queen of international stuff. So you wanna talk about that? Yeah, um, so I always say that at Davidson, you can, you can kind of find a study abroad program that works best for you in terms of how long the program is, where it's gonna be, what type of research opportunities you're seeking to get from it, or what type of kind of levels of exposure. Like, um, I'm Mexican American, and so I know that I wanted to go to a country that spoke Spanish, and Davidson offers um, the Davidson in Peru program, as well as other kind of programs here and there. And so that was completely like, you were gonna have a host family, you were gonna attend the local university, and we signed a contract at the beginning of the program that was like, like we will try our best to like only speak Spanish in the hopes that like, to really develop it, right? Um, I am a native speaker, but it was interesting to kind of be exposed to an entirely different culture and new words of Spanish that I, I was like, oh, that's what you call that? That's weird, that's not what I call that. And so um, it was definitely, even you know, just a, getting, you know, an immersion moment, right? Getting to know an entire, another corner of the world, as I like to call it. And so, um, but being a Davidson program, I went with Davidson professors and a group of Davidson students. And I think that's always really nice because you have a little piece of something that's familiar, maybe in a context that you've never been in before. And so you can definitely have that in other areas, uh, whether for a full fall semester or spring semester, I went in the fall semester. You can also have uh, summer programs as well. And it's the same thing. You you can either, there's Davidson and non-Davidson programs, and so Davidson, you're going with Davidson professors and students, and the non-Davidson programs, um, you're, you know, you work with Davidson to kind of apply to another program, and you, you may be the only Davidson student there, you may be there with one or two other peers from Davidson, but it just depends on what you're looking for. I know some people are like, you know, I need, you know, it's my, people usually go abroad around their junior fall semester and so maybe that's a time where people are like all right I'm, i, I kind of need my time from davidson so i'm going to go off and explore the world and be on my own and so um you can go in the summer i did the davidson in ghana program we were in kumasi ghana for seven weeks and we went to the university we took classes there and we had internships and so some people worked um as like volunteers at the hospital other people worked with other nonprofits, like at schools and whatnot and so you can even squeeze in a like a quick Sometimes departments or other organizations will work with Davidson to offer a quick trip over a spring break or winter break. And so those are really nice and they have kind of different goals. So some of them are volunteering. So I know that they go, I think they usually go to Ecuador, I think to, do, to run kind of like a clinic to help be volunteers at a health clinic. Um, and that's usually over winter break. Or I know sometimes I've gone with the anthropology department to Mexico to different areas to kind of look at just different aspects of culture kind of phenomenon that's happening. And so, I always, you know, I always say you can find something that really works for you at the pace that you're looking for. And I've been able to make sure I still get all my credits and I'm graduating on time. And definitely when it comes to like the summer programs or the spring break or winter break programs, I definitely stop by the study abroad office. They're extremely helpful to help you find what you're looking for and help you kind of afford some of these programs. You're kind of be like, okay, well, this is like, let's figure this out. Like maybe you can apply to this grant, you can get to this grant or really walking you through, I'm not so sure how the financial aid of this works. And they're incredible. They will answer all of your questions. And so that's kind of my broad overview and experience of study abroad. Yeah, so, I mean, I love, you know, that Cynthia, you've been to four different places, you've gone on four different programs, they each had kind of like a different focus. Um, but one thing that's really cool for us to see at more of like a macro level is um, we see like 75% of our students leave the country at some point while they're enrolled, which we're really thrilled about. And most of that is studying abroad for credit. Um, but some of it are like grant programs like Lewis had his trip to Spain or um, a program where students can travel home with a friend who's an international student. Um, and that's totally funded by Davidson. So like, um, you know, I'm thinking of like two students this past year. Um, one is from Texas and he has a friend who lives on his first year hall from Egypt and they applied for this grant and they were gonna go home to Egypt together for like at least two weeks and Davidson provided all of the funding for that because there's a real like empowerment for our international students to be able to be the host instead of the guest 
Um, and that's something Davidson is really big on. So we hope you leave the country at some point. There's a lot of opportunities to do that. Um, I want to I wanna touch really briefly on housing and, and student life, and then we can talk a little bit about the admission process and kind of get into some of those nitty gritty details that I know students might be thinking about. Um, but, you know, mentioning students living on freshman halls together and becoming really good friends, housing is done really intentionally at Davidson. So when you come in as a first year student, um, our housing staff spends like a lot of time in the summer matching roommates. It's not random. So they have you take a pretty long housing questionnaire and what's called a Myers-Briggs personality type. So it's like a personality assessment and they use that to think about kind of like, are you more extroverted or introverted? How do you like recharge and re-energize? Like kind of what do you need in your room, which is like your home space to be the most successful. And so they use those results to match you with roommates um, and build out your whole freshman hall, which is kind of cool. So. Um, our students live on campus all four years. There's traditional residence halls, there's suites, there are apartments on campus, so there's some options. Um, but what that means is that our students are here every evening, every weekend, right? Like they are invested in this campus beyond just like showing up and going to class. And that means it's a really vibrant place where there's a lot going on, right? Like if you bring together 2,000 really like creative, smart, fun people, they're going to make this a fun place to be. Um, so I'm going to let you three talk some about like student life and, you know, is this a fun place to be? Yeah, something that I really appreciate, I've, <laughs> I've said I appreciate about this in like so many times, and it probably is just because <laughs> I'm about to go, so I'm in that in denial phase, but um, so I love about Davidson the fact that I don't feel like I have to have set plans. All I can do is go up to the student union and I know something will be happening there. So it's it's really good to like actually, even if it's just going there and catching up with friends, like I know that um, there's always something uh, fun uh, going on and the fun can go from like, just really fun, like a time to um, just kind of like, just like leisure time. I remember a few of the events like, every year like the union board which is a student uh run organization who has like actually like a budget to um put on like all the campus programming um actually like a couple weeks before we were all uh sent home they actually outside of commons which is our main dining hall um we had um uh, an ice skating rink which is something that I, I i don't know how they did it i don't know like technology uh, but it was there and i have pictures um <laughs> And, uh, but then also that campus programming can go from something like so fun and some, um, and so like mindless as that, like as going to, for example, um, things that are like very, very important to so, like, talking about hard topics, having like talks uh, with experts from all around the country and all sorts of different things and having like that, like small time to engage in something that might not be what you're uh, thinking about, like while you're in the classroom, but it's something that you've been thinking about um, for long, because we understand, like, that Davidson students are people who, uh, care about what's going on, and not only the classroom, but the world, so that, like, I think CAPS program is also an opportunity to connect, uh, with the world as well. Going off of what Lewis said, this opportunity to connect with things going on in the world, we actually had Brian Stevenson come speak with us, um, this past, this past semester, and so that's just an example of the altar of just mercy coming to Davidson to speak to Davidson and the outside community and the ability to engage with, again, topics that are interesting with, in terms of inequity, the criminal justice system, things that students might be thinking about, um, they have the opportunity to engage with outside of the classroom as well. And also going off of this idea of opportunities that Davidson has, we also have CATS excursions, which is an opportunity to sign up for an experience outside of campus. Um, an example of that would be like, students signing up for a cooking class. I remember my first, my sophomore roommate did a CATS excursion skiing. So um, that's also an option. There are a variety of different options that students can sign up for. And then the first come first serve and 
they go with Davidson, funded by Davidson. So that's another example of ways to get off campus. Charlotte is also rather close, not that you would necessarily have to go there during your time at Davidson. Students tend to go there just to see what's around. Um, also, sometimes internships will be around there. Professional programming and networking will be in Charlotte. So there are opportunities to venture that way during your time at Davidson. I know I did work with the men's shelter of Charlotte, so I would go there during the weekends of my first year. Um, so there are opportunities to also engage with nonprofit organizations that are there. And again, talking about volunteer professional opportunities, there are things outside of Davidson's campus as well to engage in. <clears throat> Yeah, I would just reiterate what everyone said. Like I can, I know I, I love going to the student union. I always say it's not the best study place. We do have other study areas, but it's just, I know that I'm going to run into someone. And I think just speaking to the larger Davidson community, I know that I can't, I cannot walk from like, even now when we, you know, we have a hundred students on campus right now, but I feel like I can't walk from one corner of campus to the other without at least running into I'm gonna say three people that I know, you know, like, it's just such a nice community that we, we get to live with each other and kind of be in community with one another, not just in class, but kind of other aspects of life and really take on this kind of this journey of like getting to know who you are and like growing in yourself and getting to experience that with others as well and kind of figuring out what do I like, what I don't like, you know, who my morning person and my night person. And so um, I like to kind of like the growing pains of college, right? Where you're kind of really figuring out all these other, it's not just classes, it's your other personal aspects of life as well, who you, you know? And so it's, I think it's a really great community where we can kind of facilitate that. And we have, I think the space and kind of the dynamics and peace to do so. And Davidson really wants you to explore who you are. And I think a lot of students do that through Organizations. There's 200 student organizations on campus. So there's, um, you know, sororities and fraternities and eating houses, which are eating houses are unique to Davidson, um, similar to sororities, but um, a little bit different in their structure. Um, there are pre-professional societies. There's you know, pre-med students, pre-law students, pre-business students who want to come together around those interests. There is a dance ensemble, um, which is totally student run. There are political and like civic engagement organizations for students who want to be really active in issues they care deeply about, right? Like Alex spoke about her work with the men's shelter. She cares about, you know, issues around homelessness in Charlotte and she wants to plug into that. There are students who care about refugee support and they want to be, you know, active in that realm. Um, there are students who are interested in beekeeping and they do that out on the Davidson College farm there, right? Like it's just everything full range and so there's a lot of a lot of room here to like dig into the things that you're curious about and kind of explore the community and in your own interests that way okay um i want to be mindful of time <laughs> we've definitely talked for longer than we meant to about just like the davidson community and student life so hopefully that tells you how excited we are to share it um but i know that they're um we need to talk some about kind of like the admission process as well um and so i'm, I'm going to just kind of share a few details about how that looks at davidson um so davidson is a school that practices holistic reading and i'm using the term holistic reading very intentionally and not holistic review because our process is not one where we take a quick look at gpa or test scores and we move your application into different you know piles based on those numbers no we read every application from start to finish if you send you know five extra letters of recommendation i will read every single one but please don't do that because we ask for a lot of recommendation letters to begin with um we are you know we start with with your metrics we're going to look at your transcript we want to see that you've taken challenging classes when they were available to you whether that's you know, AP or IB or dual enrollment or whatever you have. Um, we want to look at your grades. Um, you'll notice online there's not an average GPA published for Davidson, and that's because we don't think it means a lot outside of the context of the classes that you took. So what we're looking for are students who are willing to challenge themselves in more than just, you know, one or two areas, right? You're willing to take on those high level classes pretty widely across the board and you're doing your best work, right? Um, so typically, you know, we see students performing at pretty high levels. Um, 
We see, you know, students who, who care about more than just themselves, right? We see students who put thought into their essays and their writing. They, you know, they care about being part of an organization or contributing to their families or, um, you know, holding a job or learning about their community. It doesn't matter to us what it is that you're involved in, but we want to see that you put your energy um, towards whatever it is that you care about that makes you excited, that kind of that kind of makes you tick. Um, we are, are starting a new thing in light of, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic and everything going on. Um, we are going to be test optional starting this next fall. So starting for students applying to Davidson fall 2021, and this is a three-year pilot program, um, Davidson will be test optional. So we are very excited about that. It's going to mean that our process allows us to dig in even further to who you are as a person um, and what you care about, right? Like, I mean, we just spoke for about 35 minutes about community and connections and exploring, you know, who you are, what you care about, who you want to be in the world. And so as we read applications, we really look for people who are prepared and well positioned to come to this community and be contributing members, right? So we see that through your long essays, through the fact that you've been, you know, actively involved in some things throughout high school, um, through what your letters of recommendation have to say about you. Um, and we ask for letters from your counselor and two teachers and one from a peer. So we actually ask you to have a friend write a recommendation on your behalf, which is really, really cool perspective um, for us to have and really important, we think. Um, one of the most important things to understand about how Davidson um, does things in the world of admission and financial aid is that we run a program called the Davidson Trust. And the Davidson Trust, Lewis mentioned earlier, um, is just our financial aid program. So if you ever hear us say the words the Davidson Trust, that just means need-based financial aid. So there's three promises with the Davidson Trust. So one, we read applications need blind for all U.S. citizens and permanent residents. So that means that when we make an admission decision, we do that without any information about how much you can pay. So income does not impact whether you're going to be admitted or not. Um, the second promise is that we meet 100% of your financial need that we see through your financial aid application. And the third promise is that we do that without using student loans. So our financial aid awards are made up of grants, so money you never have to pay back, and um, maybe a job on campus. Um, but as long as you apply for financial aid on time, there is not going to be a student loan in that financial aid award. So we're really excited about that. Um, that has been a really important program for us because, you know, if you look at Davidson's sticker price, um, it's about $70,000 a year. And so if we didn't have you know, that type of program, our campus would look very homogenous and it would not be an ideal learning environment at all. And so because we are able to offer the Davidson Trust, campus has not only a really wide range of you know, geographic diversity, um, but it also has a really nice range of socioeconomic diversity. And that's incredibly important um, for every single person on campus that we have diversity and range of experiences and backgrounds in these small discussion-based classes where students are learning about the world, right, and, and how to approach it and fix really big, complex problems. Um, so that is the Davidson Trust. Um, we are also a school that, in terms of our admission plans, we offer early decision and regular decision. Um, so early decision is a binding plan for students who know that they want to be at Davidson, no doubt. Um, and then regular decision is non-binding. So um, just know that you know, the, the early plan at Davidson is, is a binding one and regular is not. Okay, I'm going to take a breath um, with that. And um, open maybe our conversation up to any questions that students might have. So if any of the students want to submit questions into the chat or if any of your um, counselors want to throw out questions that you would like for us to speak on, we'd be glad to answer. And we do have the list of questions as well. Here's one. Um, from Christina, can you give recommendations for which application deadlines students should apply to? Sure. So um, early decision one is um, due to us November 15th. Early decision two is due to us January 2nd. Those are basically the same plan. They're just 
different points in the year. Um, you should only apply to Davidson or anywhere um, early decision, which is binding, if you are 100% sure that that is the school you want to go to. Um, because the agreement basically says, if I'm admitted early decision, I will enroll and I'll withdraw my applications from other schools before I've even heard back because it doesn't matter anymore. This is where I wanted to go anyway. Like, I'm all in. And so if you know that Davidson is where you want to be, early decision can be a great plan because um, you make that commitment to us and that allows us to think a little bit more broadly about making a commitment back to you, right? Um, statistically, there's an advantage to applying to schools early decision and what we see is that um, in terms of like financial aid and um, levels of financial need among the student body, it looks the same at early decision versus regular because we are meeting our students' full need at early decision, just like we are at regular. So in terms of finances, it's gonna look the same for you. Um, we do have a net price calculator on our website. So as you're talking um, with your counselors, your advisors, your families, um, the net price calculator is a really good tool to know what Davidson might look like for you um, financially and if early decision is a commitment you're comfortable making. Um, if you're not totally sure, if it's very important to you to um, be able to compare financial aid awards, um, then regular decision is the way to go. Um, so that application is due to us January 6th, and we get back to students kind of like mid to late March. Um, and then you have until May 1st to let us know. Um, next question, Duane is asking, how supportive is Davidson of undocumented and DACA students? That's a great question. Um, so Davidson, admits, enrolls, supports undocumented and DACA students. Um, we still meet full financial need for our admitted undocumented and DACA students, still using a no loan um, award, so made up of grants, work study. Um, there is support for the undocumented and DACA student population through the Center for Diversity and Inclusion on campus. Um, and so they offer like some community gatherings um, in terms of like, um, I believe it's maybe monthly dinners, um, but just space to um, be in community together. Um, there is legal counsel available to undocumented and DACA students um, free of cost. Um, through our college's um, legal office, so students have access to that. There is support through the Dean of Students office, um, as well as like emergency funding. So if students need to travel home because um, a family member is ill or anything else is going on, they can apply for an emergency grant um, to travel home. Um, Cynthia or Alex or Lewis, would you add anything that I'm not thinking of in terms of student support and experience for undocumented DACA students? I would say um, I've had friends in the past who have, it's kind of an informal program, but I know that it does exist to an extent. Um, and so instead of offering kind of international travel when there's difficulty kind of with like legal status or kind of visas and whatnot, um, I know that they've offered domestic kind of study away. So part of having a, a partnership with another institution um, and the student can go study abroad for a semester or even a year. I've seen it where um, it's, they're still in the States and so they're just kind of experiencing another school and another environment and another community. Um, and they get to kind of bring back, kind of get away from campus and so be a part of that experience. I know like what was said earlier, 75% of students do kind of travel away from campus at some point. And so I know that's one of the ways in which Davidson tries to provide that opportunity and experience. Yeah, that's great. Thanks for adding that. Yeah. Um, Christine is asking, given that we'll now be test optional, if students choose to submit their scores, could that negatively affect them if they didn't score among your previous year's test score averages? That's a great question. So basically kind of asking like, should I submit my test scores if they're not within what our middle 50% range has been? Um, no, not necessarily um, would it hurt you. I will say that even before we were going test optional, standardized testing was always the least weighted factor of our process, right? So like as we are reading applications and preparing to share them in committee, um, our conversations don't center on the metrics very much, right? Like we all, we see, you know, the, the GPA, the test scores, um, and that's really a starting point of the conversation. Um, and then we really get into the personal side a lot more. Um, 
you know, I will say if they are, are very far off from what the mid 50 has been, then yeah, I probably would not share them. Um, I would say if they're, you know, within a, a couple points right on the ACT, then it, that's fine. But again, it's, it's completely up to you. So I think, you know, as you look at your test scores and your coursework and your grades, you can think about, okay, does my test score um, show something in terms of my academic strength and potential that my grades and my coursework does not um, in a way that's going to position me strongly? And if so, then sure, go ahead and share them. And if not, you, know, you don't have to do that. Um, so I would say it's kind of up to you just in terms of how you feel like it rounds out the rest of your application. Um, so I hope that's helpful. I'm happy to talk with students more like one-on-one -on -one, if that would be helpful um, as they kind of think about test scores. Um, retention rate between first and second years, great question. 95% um, of our students return to campus for their sophomore year. Um, again, back to this being a place that is tight-knit community, lots of professor support, um, and even beyond like your formal advisor, there's, this is just a place where you're going to be very connected, and so there's not a lot of, you know, falling through the cracks that really can happen at a place this small. Um, and so we see about 95% of our students coming back for their sophomore year. Um, what parts of the application do you feel allow students to stand out the most? Um, that's a great question. Um, anything beyond the metrics, right? Um, kind of what I was just saying. So we, when we sit in committee, there's about 14 or 15 of us sitting around a table, including our dean, um, and our, our students are nodding. So they're all, um, they've been working in our office this past year and as part of their role, they got to sit in and observe um, admission committee, which was awesome. And, um, you know, what happens is there's, you know, a big screen with what we call the docket and that has metrics for the students. So we see, you know, their GPA, we see roughly where they sit in their senior class, we see their test scores, we see their high school, where they're from. And if I'm presenting a student, you know, all of my colleagues are going to look up at the screen and they're going to see the numbers and then they're going to look back at me and say, and what else? Right. So the conversation really digs into the personal side. And so as you write your essay and you um, think intentionally about who's going to write your recommendations and you put thought into how you tell me about what you do outside of the classroom, what you care about, that's going to give me a lot of fuel to walk into that admission committee room and be excited and be like, this is Cynthia. Cynthia is from Chicago. Cynthia is super excited about educational like experience and access and you know the culture around educational institutions, right? Um, so Cynthia, sorry, you're on my screen. So I'm totally using you as the example, but right. And that's gonna help my colleagues get excited about you. And it's gonna help us think about you as a contributing powerful member of a community where people come and they make each other better, right? And they ask really good questions and they dig into things in these small discussion-based classes. Um, and it doesn't matter what you're excited about, but it matters that you kind of put some energy into caring about something, right? Um, so I would say the personal parts of your application are where you hold an incredible amount of power um, in crafting an application that's going to help us understand like, okay, this is kind of who this person is at this point in their life um, and how they've been spending their time and what they're excited about and like who they might, you know, be over the next couple of years. So um, I think that's helpful. <laughs> um, would each of the students please share what is the first word that comes to mind when they think of Davidson's culture and explain why you chose that one word? That is an awesome question. I love that. Um, I would say that I think of family, but I don't think of family in this um, like Kana Candy kind of way of like, we all love each other. It's, it's more of like, it has like allowed me to understand what um, family and what a community really means uh of for example like a big part of it was actually um joining my fraternity lambda theta phi latter fraternity incorporated um and getting to like know people like who are literally my brothers uh through that uh but actually being part of our community where you uh recognize and you're able to recognize that you don't have the answers uh to everything so our community that actually we encourage each other to uh learn more and i think um I usually think of the way in which our community is not generally like 
competitive in the way that we're not competing with each other. We're very much aware um, that like there are opportunities for all of us. Um, and overall, like when you sit in a classroom, you know that the person sitting next to you is someone who's waiting to tell your success story. Um, we understand that as a, when one of us uh, gets to do amazing things out, like out in the world, that is great for all of us. And I, and I think that's what always leads me to invest more in this community uh, because I get to be part of like the journey of people who will be changing the world t 10, 20 years from now. So I think, I think of family. I'll jump in. Um, I would say initiative, uh, something that I'm really, I think drew me to Davidson. And then I think in talking about like what attracts you to a school, I think it's also important to think about what is it about a school that makes you want to stay? And I feel like that's, that's this kind of energy of initiative that I think the student body really has and that I'm honored to be a part of and contribute to. And so it's really like, we look, it's this idea that we look out for one another best and we're really committed and loyal to that. I think dynamic and so if there's any, ever a situation on campus and truly really think of any type of situation on a campus that requires a moment of reflection and requires a moment of addressment and kind of moving forward how do we address this like really take any liberty to think what what, what can go wrong on a college campus that requires that response I know that as a student body we are incredibly quick to do like to call out and to hold people accountable and kind of invite them into a moment of learning and moment of growth and kind of say, hey, like, I don't think that was cool. Like, let's talk about that. Let's unpack what that meant. Like, what, what that means. What is the greater impact of that? Who is affected? Um, and really making sure that our voices are heard and that, you know, we have loud voices too and people are listening to us. And so I would say that's something I'm definitely proud um, to be a part of. And I think that because student Davidson students are so invested, we're also trying to make sure that not only we are enjoying Davidson as a community, but we are able to make it a better place and community for future students to enjoy. And so I feel like it's just incredible to, to kind of reflect on how different Davidson was 10 years ago, talking to alumni then and now and seeing like, wow, like, I'm glad that you guys have that because that's something I really would have really benefited from when I was there. So I think as a community, as students, we're always kind of pushing ourselves to be the best that we can, but also pushing the institution to be like, you need to support us in this journey, in this growth. And I think two words that kind of weave themselves throughout what both Cynthia and Lewis said would be inclusive and evolving. So as a family of people and a community of people from diverse backgrounds, um, you have to also remember that there, there is an inclusive aspect of that. I um, mean, going off of what Cynthia said with initiative also comes the evolution of that inclusion. So as an institution, Davidson states this commitment to diversity inclusion, but what does that look like? And so I think that this evolving piece and this initiative piece of like saying, okay, there's not just one solution to what inclusive looks like. There's not just this one picture image of what it would look like to have an inclusive community. So we have to constantly be evolving and asking different questions and taking that initiative, finding different solutions, but at the same time, always remembering that we're a community of people doing that together. So that inclusive aspect is a shared vision. And I think that that's something that for me, it's even social life where um, social events are open to everyone on campus. There's not closed off events just to specific student groups or students in this eating house or fraternity. Um, I know for, I'm a part of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated and that is a community that I view as family on campus. So understanding that there's different groups of people on campus um, that you can also connect with on a deeper level. And it doesn't mean, of course, as Lewis said, that this, you're buying into this picture perfect family, but you're buying into a community that really cares about what inclusion looks like for you. And your voice can come out in that conversation and be invited into that evolution of what that looks like on Davidson's campus because from year to year, the people change. And that means that it, what inclusive looks like will change. And so that is a constantly evolving image and it's an image that takes the student into account. For so this last question, Dwayne is asking for each of you, Steph Curry or LeBron James. 
I think that's to the students. <laughs> Alex says Steph. I love it. Yeah, I think I'll echo that, although Let me think I don't about really it. follow the NBA, so I'll follow that. <laughs> no, I, I think Steph, just because I, I'm actually able to see how much, I mean, not to say that LeBron doesn't do it, but um, it's something very special when, like, someone, like, cares about a community, but we're to see someone who invests in a community, but and also that community happens to be mine. I think that's very special, so, Steph. Yeah, because Steph comes to, like, at least one basketball game a year. Um, so that's another thing. You can definitely see that he does care about the communities from which he came from and giving back to those. Yeah. Um, I wanna be mindful of time, but I see that we have a student question. So I definitely wanna answer um, that. And it's, it's to our current students. Could each of the students state their majors, major or majors, and briefly explain the thought process of why you chose Davidson? I'll jump in. <laughs> I'll go ahead and start. But um, I am an anthropology and educational studies major. Um, again, through that kind of make your own major program, the Center for Interdisciplinary Studies. I'm also minoring in Latin American studies and why I chose Davidson. So I didn't find out. I learned about Davidson through my college counselor. I'm, you know, I never knew it existed. I know my college counselor was like, hey, like, you're kind of already looking at liberal arts colleges. Maybe you should take out Davidson. And I was like, who's that? I don't know who that is. And so um, in getting to talk to, you know, the, my college counselor, like through Davidson, like that was a sign for the region. And in getting to know Davidson students and alumni, I was quickly attracted to this kind of sense of community. Like they saw something in me and they were like, yeah, like you, you're going to kill it here at Davidson. Like you're going to do amazing. Like, it's just like, you got it, you know? And I took that confidence with it and kind of ran with it. I was like, oh, okay. Like, they really think I can make it, you know, maybe, maybe I can. And so um, they were kind of, they invited me into that, into that love and that support. And they were just kind of like, here's all the opportunities that you can have from Davidson. Like, like, we're just waiting here for you to say yes. Like, I need you to come and like, take advantage of everything that we have to offer for you. And so I really leaned into that and I can, and being, going to school that was so far away from me, it's a 13 hour drive and I'm gonna have to make it in like two weeks. Um, but I was a little bit nervous. I was like, oh, I'm gonna really be on my own and away from, away from family. And so I was, it was important to me that I had a family and I felt that I was, no matter what, I was gonna be supported and I had people I could turn to and that's definitely the case. And I still talk to the very first people I've met on campus um, to this day, you know, so yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a double major. I'm a psychology major and I'm also an education policy and human development major uh, through the Center for Interdisciplinary Studies. Um, originally, I, I came to Davidson just because it was um, because of the people and then I think uh, as like as of time has gone on, like I realized that um, Davidson was not only like a good school for me, but Davidson was the school for me. Um, so I think it's, when I think of Davidson, I think of like the people. Um, I also think about uh, the many opportunities I have. And I, I also think about the fact that I'm like, I'm empowered um, to actually get to determine my journey um, and get to determine what uh, life um, from now on would look like for me. So having all the tools that I need uh, to go out into the world and feeling like, yes, a little bit scared, but ready, um, is something that I, I think I owe to Davidson and to the people at Davidson specifically. I'm a Hispanic studies major with the intention to um, pursue law upon graduation. And I found out about Davidson like later into my junior year. And it's kind of wild because I live closer by to Davidson. So it's a school that's close to me, but it's not one that I had heard of until later on. And I think the reason for it, that was just like, it wasn't on a lot of students at my high school's radar um, in terms of like the price tag, thinking about, you know, in-state versus out-of-state, pri private versus public. But Something that I really love about Davidson is that once I got there and had those conversations, that fear of finances kind of dissipated because I knew that this was a community that really cared about the student and was going to meet the need that I demonstrated. And so then it became about more about learning about the community. And I think 
something that was scary at first was everybody talks about like stepping onto a campus and being like, yes, this is the place for me. Like I know that when I step on this campus, this is it. I met this person, whatever. For me, I did not have that feeling until after I became a student at Davidson. I didn't show up on a college campus and say, oh my gosh, this is it. This is me. I felt that after um, I got to Davidson and I chose Davidson because I knew that it had an environment academically um, that would support what I wanted to do in the world and would help me to develop the skills that I needed to get there. And then when I got to Davidson, I couldn't have been more happy with that decision because I sent I sat into a community that um, supported those goals and also supported like my values as a person. And so I would say that I definitely felt that this is the place for me feeling after I spent time at Davidson and not to feel like stressed out about feeling that immediate connection with campuses because that can come later on as well. Yeah, definitely. I love that you touched on that, Alex, right? Because like there's sort of this myth that like you're going to step on a campus and have this like say yes to the dress moment and a lot of students don't have that and that's okay right like sometimes you, know, you have to kind of like think about you know what you think you want out of a college experience and you may kind of have that moment once you're already somewhere and i hope i hope that all of the students you know do get to ultimately find that feeling um so with that, I know that we have um, already gone a little bit over time. So I want to thank um, all the students who are here who took the time to sit um, and and listen. And I hope this was helpful as you thought a little bit about Davidson. Um, I know an hour can be a really long time to sit on a Zoom call. So thank you for doing that. Um, and I am going to drop um, my name and email address into the chat box. And I know your, your counselors have it as well. And so if you have any um, other questions, please feel free to, to send me an email. Um, glad to hear from you at any time. And thank you again so much for being here. We're also asking all the participants um, if you would please um, email Meredith directly um, so she could add you to their listserv and keep you updated about any new information from Davidson's admissions office. Uh, we thank you especially to the students who joined Meredith um, here. Um, today, you really added a lot of value and substance to this conversation. Um, this is a great idea on your part, Meredith. Thanks for inviting them. And thank, thank you all for, for joining us. To all our participants, we encourage you as usual to fill out our survey at bit.ly backslash GPC workshop um, so we can continue to review our services and improve it to better serve you. Thanks again, everyone. And we can see participants um, at 2 p.m. And of course, Davidson, you're welcome to join us then too. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.